The 2023 Atlas Mountain Race has now officially finished. Uh, Luisa Werner took the win in the female event and Robin Gamperle won the men's race with the fastest time overall. Now, during the coverage that I've been doing over the past week, I've had some really great questions in the comments. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time just to answer them and uh, take a little time to go into in depth a bit more with them. So the first question I have um, from Chazney. 999 uh, stumbled across your channel by accident um, so Josh Reed from the North East is in the race so I'm cheering for him uh, I believe Josh actually finished the race um, kind of mid-pack I think uh, but he, he got it done um, he asks is there prize money in this type of event well the short answer is no uh, most bikepacking events don't have any kind of well any kind of prizes at all to be honest um, there's no prize money it's still a very amateur sport, uh, although I, I guess it is slowly starting to change with, with a few riders now, you know, doing this full time. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not a, a kind of a sport that you do for prize money. Um, there may be a small prize at the end of certain events. So for example, the Atlas mountain race, um, that they, they have like a, a golden tagine pot. So the, the, the tagine pot is probably one of the, the most uh, seen things in during the race at the various restaurants and things. And you'll get a nice little uh, souvenir gold spray painted pot with, with your position on. Um, but it's more of a token and uh, a nice way to remember a good result. Generally speaking, there are no prizes in, in any of these events. Um, and to be honest, I, I don't think it's the, the kind of thing that that really warrant surprise because uh, it sounds a bit corny, but you know the, the experience of doing it is worth way more than any prize, um, you know, any monetary prize would be. Um, so yeah, that's that's a nice, quick, easy one to get going with. Uh, so second up on the list, Stefano from the Broom Wagon Podcast. He asks, "Is it me, or is this ultra nowadays? It looks more like a Zwift one-hour race than an ultra endurance race." Just go full steam from the gun and see how the others react. Well, there has been a trend for that. Um, I think there's a lot of new people coming into the, these races who maybe don't have the experience and maybe haven't quite um, experienced how how hard it can be if you do go out so hard. There are some people that can just go hard and not sleep and ride hard and, and just you know go from the gun. But I think generally speaking certainly on a race over kind of three or four days you do need a bit more of a like a, there are more tactics and a bit more strategic thinking um involved i think even if you see as this race has has evolved um i think stefano commented on one of my first uh, daily roundups of the race and as the race you know progressed the people who were leading in the first couple of days weren't leading at the end and, and robin who won in the in the men's event and and louisa in the women's event as well they both came through stronger in the second half. And I think that's just testament to not starting too hard and riding within themselves and, um, you know, and kind of pacing it well. So I think, uh, I don't necessarily agree with what Stefano says. Um, I think, think some people do go out too hard and they always will because it's just, I guess, nature in these, these races. But I don't think that necessarily pays. And I think ultra racing is still very much about looking after your body um, you know, managing sleep, managing food, managing your bike, all of these things add up to make a fast uh, ultra endurance race, not just the engine. So there's a couple of questions um, that are very similar. So AB says, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the recreational riders who are trying to finish pacing, eating strategy. Do you, do you ride fast and rest more? or ride slowly and rest less. What's your advice for staying ahead of that terrible snail? Just for reference, uh, or for content, context on the, the race map, you'll see that there's a little snail at the end, and basically that, that, that moves along the map to give reference to the riders right at the tail end, so that will finish at the finish line exactly when the race cutoff is. Um, so if you basically, if you go behind that snail, you can still finish the event, but you, you won't get an official finish time. And the chances are there won't be anyone there at the finish line to welcome you home. And the same goes for the, the checkpoints along the way. Um, and there's another one. Well, I guess this is this is kind of related as well uh, from Finely Tuned Ride. That'd be Rob. Hi, Rob. Uh, what is the difference between break time and total stop time? Uh, etc on the map so that will be where there's um, the, the map will show like moving time 
break time and stop time. Um, I said su I'd suggest that the, the the break time is probably when you just stop for like less than ten minutes or so. Um, and stop time is there must be a timer in the in the software that that will say if you stop for over half an hour that's stop time. It just gives you a bit of a breakdown, and that kind of plays quite nicely into the you know the first part of the question. Um, pacing for a race. I mean, as I mentioned before um, from Stefano's question, I think pacing is key. And I don't think it really matters if you're at the back or if you're at the front. You, you just need to, you need, to, to, you need to ride your own race. Because if you go too hard too early, then you, you can just pay for that physically later on. I think the best way, I mean, your pace is your pace. You can't really go any faster than you can go. It might be fast enough to be right at the front, or it might be fast enough just to stay ahead of like the cutoff times. But the best way to, to ride fast over the entire route is just be consistent. Not stop too long. You know, stop. When you, when you stop, just, um, you know, don't try not to waste any time. If you are going to have a sleep, make sure you kind of try and stick to your plan or sleep, sleep strategically. So sleep in a checkpoint and say, I'm going to have six hours sleep here, but then I really have to get going. And I really have to keep moving. And if you look at the, the speed graphs from the, from the race, the riders who, who quite often do the best have the, the, less, the least amount of stop time. Um, as I said before, there is a slight balance between not stopping at all. I do think the body does need a rest and obviously you need to eat and sleep is very beneficial over, over four days. But it's all, it's all about finding the, the, the kind of balance. And I think it, it is quite a personal thing and it's not something you just know off the bat. You do need to do a few races or a few practice trips and just experiment. You know, some people can ride off two hours sleep, no problem. Other people, we're thinking Sophie in here, can, can ride through four days without really sleeping. Other people will need five hours a night and then ride faster during the day. So you just have to figure it out and, and see what works for you. But uh, I, I just think consistency is, is the key, generally speaking. So the next question, again, there's, there's two, two very similar questions. When someone needs to scratch because they can't finish, how do they get back to the start finish? And uh, if you have a problem in the more isolated areas and you have to scratch, how do you get sorted out? Well, the general rule of thumb in these races is you have to sort yourself out. Um, obviously, there are scenarios where if you had a really bad accident, then, then maybe you, you wouldn't be able to sort yourself out. Uh, then, then that is slightly different. Um, a lot of the races, Atlas Mountain Race and other thing, others included um, have spot trackers, GPS trackers, to to give them the, like the, the moving dot on the map during the races. And a lot of those have an SOS button. If you press the SOS button, well, firstly, it's very expensive. Normally, the authorities are um, made aware, and quite often, if you're in Europe, that means you know medical medical evacuation via helicopter. Obviously, in other countries, for example, we're talking about you know, the Atlas Mountain Race here. That is not really an option. However, uh, the race organization do have two medical emergency vehicles kind of in the shadows um, just in case. So if you, press, if you press the emergency tracker button during the Atlas Mountain race, that will go straight to one of those emerg emergency medical vehicles and the race organizers, and they will try and coordinate to get you out of trouble. However, you should not rely on that, and you should always be able to hopefully, bar it like major accident, aside try and get yourself at least to a, a town where you can scratch and then get either a taxi or a, a bus or, or some other way or rest for a few days and then ride directly to the finish which is is, is the most common um, method of, of scratching um, a lot of people kind of got halfway and if you look at the race map you'll see that there's a major road that that runs down the um, the southern side of the Atlas Mountains and goes towards the coast and a lot of riders if they did scratch would have aimed just to kind of ride over of, over two days and take it easier on the tarmac and uh, and shortcut back that way. Um, the next question, Jason Pike says, where is Sofien's, Sofien Sahili? Um, well, he's not at the Atlas Mountain Race in 2023. Uh, he's I believe he's been um, touring in Thailand most of the winter and he's aiming for races later in the summer. I think it's worth saying that there's so many races nowadays and they're so hard on the body, you just can't do too many in a row. So, you know, by starting later in the year, Sofian will save a bit of energy. I think his first race is the Hellenic Mountain Race, which is uh, the start of May, and then the Highland Trail Race, and then I think the Silk Road later in the year, and probably a few other things, which is still an exceptionally big amount of work to do. So 
Um, don't worry, Sophie will will crop up at some point in the year, no doubt, and very probably be right at the front of these races. Um, now, a bit of a, a potentially controversial question from Playmore Guitar. Honest question. Do they do dope tests on some of these guys in ultras? Three years ago, 300 kilometers a day was winning. Well, sorry, three years ago, 300 kilometers a day was winning you everything. How times have changed so quickly. Now, 400 kilometers a day isn't enough. And I'm not making assumptions. I'm just asking if it's all honest. Well, I don't know. Is the, you know, the, the true answer. Um, there is no testing, dope testing, or drug testing in ultra racing. Um, most of, you know, there's no sanctioning body. It's not like a WADA affiliated sport. So, so who knows? Um, I suspect there isn't, um, mainly because it's just, it's just too hard. And there's too many factors aside from being a really strong cyclist. Um, you know, the question asked, you know, about 300 kilometers a day was enough. And then now, you know, 400 K isn't enough. Well, that, that depends on the course, really. You can't necessarily compare the Atlas Mountain race to like a road race, for example. Um, but I do think the sport is evolving. I really do think that people are getting better. There's more, more riders doing this, you know, doing bikepacking who've come from like pro backgrounds. I mean, 10 years ago, almost, I could be at the front of a, quite a lot of these races, certainly in Europe. And I know my physical capabilities and I know kind of things like my VO2 max and how they, they stack up in the, the real world of elite athletes. And um, I'm, like, I'm not an elite athlete. So it, it, for me, it's logical that, that guys who have come from like the higher echelons of the sport down, who maybe have like, you know, mid 70s VO2 maxes and things like that, you know, enough to be like a, a pro rider. They're now doing these events. So they're just going to have a, str- a bigger engine and they're going to be faster and stronger. And there's enough people now who are, doing races regularly enough to know to learn the other skills because that's that's part of it i mean you could take all the you know the you know blood boosting drugs in the world um but then if you sleep for 10 hours every night and you scratch after three days it's too hard i mean there's no point there, there's too many other things that affect it aside from you know physical performance so i like to think that that it is generally a very very clean sport um the only thing i i think of that that might be beneficial over the, the shorter races is some kind of stimulation just to, to stay awake through the nights but i don't think i just don't think it's viable i mean if you look back at pro cycling certainly before the blood doping era um the riders were taking amphetamines and it was pretty well known that if you took amphetamines in like the i say the, the spring classics in belgium the one day races you you, you would get a an advantage but it made you make poor poor decisions so you got mad stupid long attacks and things like that and i think it was pretty well known that that those kind of things just weren't working well in the grand tours and i'd say that the, in generally speaking the world of ultra cycling and bikepacking is more on that grand tour end of the scale so i don't think that that kind of like stimulant drug would would be that beneficial over the course of say a week race or you know, a two-week race. I think that the downsides would far out outweigh any um, any benefit benefits. I mean, I might well be wrong. Um, I hope I'm not, but but who knows? Who knows? Um, is 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 the honest answer there? And finally, the last question: Do you wish you were there? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Quite honestly, I think the Atlas Mountain Race is one of the best races I've ever done. Nelson does a really great job of, of organising his events. Um, the course is is fantastic. I mean, Morocco is incredible, a great culture. Um, it's a really hard, tough, unforgiving course. But there's uh, it's, there's a really nice balance. You know, there's enough organisation around it to to really kind of. Um, be welcomed and feel part of something and it's great so i'm pretty sure i will be back at the atlas mountain race at some point so that's it uh that's that's it for my my roundup and question and answer on the atlas mountain race if you've enjoyed it please like and subscribe um i shall be covering some more races later in the year and again if you've got any more questions put them in the q a and i'll uh, i'll try and get back to you as and when i can thanks